everybody, this is Geraldine again, and today is day three of our self-love challenge for this week. Uh, running a little behind schedule today, I um, wanted to make sure that I got everything that I needed in order to explain this very important topic that I want to get into today. So um, the question is, who are we? And the question is, why is self-love so important? And this is a different perspective maybe that you maybe haven't even considered yet. And it's something that I want to bring to light because it's so important in understanding why loving ourselves is imperative to the evolution of ourselves and the collective consciousness. And the only way that we are going to understand that is understanding who we are as human beings. What is a human and what makes us such complex, desired, energy sources in this universal matrix construct that we're in, this matrix construct that we are in, living in right now. So what I want to explain is a couple things. Um, during my progression over the past uh, couple years, I have undergone several different regressions that have assisted me in helping me and understand and see with my very own eyes what the universe looks like what it uh how it is put together and how everything is working together so i want to share what i have seen on my journeys to the very highest planes of information with you so that you can understand my love and the importance that i feel um, that it is having this connection with ourselves and understanding our ability to connect with our divine infinite source of power. Hello everybody, it's so wonderful to see you guys. Hi Sharon, hi Nial. self love challenge, hashtag self love, I love that, thank you. Um, hey Veronica, so awesome to see you. So I wanna start a little bit at the beginning and I'm going to kind of I'm going to kind of glaze through all of this because all of this is a very deep subject actually and it involves understanding the history of mankind, understanding evolution, understanding physics, science and the origins of ourselves as humans. But so I'm going to do a really quick overview and I will do another video on that uh, deeper so we can get into the real uh, history of mankind and DNA origins and all of that. And that being said, I want to invite you to come check out my little presentation that I put out that I did for MUFON. My very first presentation I did is on my YouTube channel. So please feel free to check that out. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, I was extremely nervous in that one. So, uh, you know, it's not as refined as I would want it to be. Um, and hopefully the ones that are coming out now will be. Uh, I'm going to be also speaking at Stargate to the Cosmos um, coming up shortly. And I will have a, a different presentation, more complete presentation. And in that, um, in that kind of um, what is it called? That convention that I want to share with everyone. So anyway, let's get back into this real quick. We're talking about the origins. Now, what we're talking about here, why do we live in a matrix universe? Okay, first of all, the universe and the way that it works out, the way that I have seen it, is that everything has a duality. Everything has a duality. And the way that the universe is, is, created is almost like an infinity cycle and within this infinity cycle we are moving in and out of dimensions as we are progressing now the infinity cycle is the construct of two dualities in which make up this whole nucleus of existence that we live in and within those two realities um, we are it is rotating in this form of um, this, uh, this infinity cycle is rotating. And as we are rotating, we are merging interdimensionally, okay? What those two dualities represent energetically and vibrationally are basically the positive and the negative charge of an atom, okay? So we understand the positive and negative of everything within the very, uh, down to the very molecular level of existence. Everything that we have, every cell, even within our body, has a positive and negative. There are, there are dualities to everything in order for it to work 
and to create um, this energy and energy is life force so our universe looks like this incredible infinity cycle that is cycling through and now this is the furthest uh, image of what this uh, creation looks like beyond that we are moving through this uh, kind of a spiral cycle through different dimensions and what I mean by different dimensions is that we are uh, it's it's a cycle of evolution that we are moving through it's a natural cycle of evolution that we are moving through all the way around and what it looks like we are moving through is a cycle it's a cycle it's like a, a round cycle that we are moving through and I'm gonna get really into that um, in another video because there's way too much to talk about to have to make it uh, something that we can explain easily hi Douglas from Georgia great to see you Denny awesome to see you Denny um, so what I want to um, get into next is talking about how this plays a role what does that mean to us? Why do we need to understand that? Now, as we are living in these two dualities, at this moment in time, it appears that we are within one duality of that construct. And that one duality seems to be, just to simplify things, I'm going to say one is white, one is black. We are in, let's say, the black aspect of this duality, just like a yin and a yang positive and negative we're talking about dualities here and it is much more complex than this but we're going to simplify it just by talking about those two dualities in that way so if we are here on the black side of this duality what it seems to be is a manifestation of this energy of this duality that has a concentrated energy where it's not allowing energy to flow freely the natural and healthy way for energy to flow through these dualities is to naturally experience each other as needed through the progression of evolution. Now what is happening right now is that we are cycling through this, this uh, evolution and what that means is that as we are cycling we are experiencing life here on this planet and we are experiencing life on this planet as uh, you, me, right now in this matrix universe, having the life that we're having here on Facebook, chit-chatting, talking about all these things. But what that means on a greater scale is that we are within a reincarnation cycle, choosing the lives that we are living in, let's say, and we are experiencing these contractual agreements to life. Now, there is a whole nother aspect to this, which talks about um, the concept of what, what, what is this manifestation of energy, which is now stagnant within this duality. And there's a lot of different ways to explain that. One way that I can explain it to you is that within this manifestation of energy that is stuck here within this duality, we see the alien races, many different uh, species that live here in this universe, including humans ourselves. Now, what makes us different from these other races that are here? And races equals to manifestations of energy within this duality. What makes us different is that we are source essences of the other duality, of light, okay? Ultimately, we are all the same because we all contain the duality, both dualities within us. Every single atom, every single intelligent life on this existence of creation holds both dualities. But we, as source essence, have this essence of infinite duality within us, which is, let's say, the white aspect of creation. How do we know that? Because we are infinite beings as we are cycling through these reincarnation cycles. We have the ability to cycle through these lifetimes to experience all of these lifetimes that we're having, okay? So as we come into this matrix universe, we are now flowing energy and now we are almost as if we are stuck between this manifestation of duality. 
What does that mean? That means that being stuck in this manifestation of duality, this manifestation of duality is made up of different kind of species of beings here on in this matrix universe. And these beings are not of the duality that we are talking about, of infinite source. Their souls, their essence, do not come from infinite source, which means they don't have the ability to regenerate and to continuously be cycling through these lifetimes as expansive energy, okay? So what does that mean? That in order for them to survive and to thrive within this universe, they would need, they would require an energy source, a substance to feed off of. So to simplify this explanation, we are here on this planet Earth as these beings, which I talked about previously in another talk as white blood cells. If you guys saw my regression with Albi, talk about being white blood cells fighting with red blood cells here on a planet, almost as if we are fighting a virus. And that is exactly how I am trying to explain this right now, because we are on this planet, and this planet is uh, a manifestation of this energy, of this in information, of this intelligence. Everything in the universe is intelligence. So it is pure intelligence and life. Okay? Whether it's from one duality or the other, it is pure intelligence and it consists of both aspects of themselves, within themselves. So when we are here on the planet, we are also cycling through these lifetimes, having experiences. Now, coming down to a level that we can understand this exchange of energy, what happens is that we create contractual agreements here, or we have been put into a cycle where we have been made to create these contractual agreements on the planet. This duality requires our energy in order to cycle and continue living and thriving through using our energy. And the energy that they require in order to survive is a very low vibration. It is a heavy, let's say a substantially heavy vibration that we give off as light beings with our fear, with our uh, anger, with uh, very low vibrations, like for example, um, the lower aspects of sexuality. Okay, and so when we start to understand that, then we kind of start to look at the matrix and what it is and how it's operating here within our reality. And we start to notice that a lot of things in our surrounding existence right now are causing a lot of fear, triggering a lot of fear, causing a lot of, um, uh, you know, not, not just fear, but separation from ourselves. So when we come into the light, our beautiful souls, that our source essence, come into the human body with this pure information since the very beginning essence of time, of your existence, of your expression of life. And all of those experiences that you have had in your life come into the human body and come out and provide that information to two aspects of yourself your DNA, and the DNA is connected with information with your ancestral line, which is connected to a network, okay? We are fractals of source. And these fractals of source are what your, makes up your network, basically. Each human being is a fractal of source. And as we are experiencing life here, we are manifesting our experience through um, our, our previous experience through the universe and through the different aspects of experience. Ultimately, universe and both dualities must experience themselves, each other, in order to thrive and move. And that is the natural and healthy way of our energy moving through these two dualities. But what is occurring right now is that as expressions of life, we are stuck. We are stuck within this matrix universe here, within this manifestation of, let's say, this dark duality within the matrix universe, within the black matrix universe. And 
what we have been uh, made to do is to constantly reincarnate here on this planet with experiences that we believe assist our ascension. But I want to share with you that essentially the entire matrix universe is evolving and it is what it's doing. So whether we like it or not, everything is evolving. We are ascending conscious, con constantly through a cycle of evolution from one dimension to another. And each one of those dimensions are um, uh, a level of vibration which is different to the next. It is higher. And as we evolve and evolve and evolve, there are many different layers of that evolution. Okay? And so um, it is exactly like the Fibonacci sequence. Every single one of those layers are going to have a different scalar number of evolutions and different vibrations and, dim and dimensions. Right now, we are currently in a spiral of 13, uh, let's say, coils of evolution within this particular reality. Just this dimension. But at the same time, we are multidimensional beings and have the ability of shifting and moving through different dimensions simultaneously based on our vibration and our ability to access those dimensions. So what we're talk why, why am I talking about all of this when I talk about self-love? Because when we are going through these cycles of evolution as humans, when we are experiencing everything that we are experiencing, we have a choice and that's something that we need to become very aware of as source souls that come here to the earth to cycle through these experiences of reincarnation we come to the earth to have a moment of uh, breathing above water and i always like to make the analogy of a glass of water and as we're moving through cycling within the water it's as if we're uh, jumping up and down we're like dolphins that go up and down in that water and as we are going underneath the water we are um we are uh dead we are do going through the afterlife of choosing our story of choosing our reincarnation of choosing the network that we're going to be working here our mother our father our sister our brother our lovers and then we're choosing our experiences and we choose our experiences oh i want to learn how to love in this lifetime so what happens is i'm going to set myself up with these kinds of very difficult situations where i am forced to learn how to love someone okay or we are trying to learn how to connect with ourselves and love ourselves and we put ourselves in difficult situations where we uh, create this physical image of ourselves as something that doesn't match the norm of what something lovable would be so now we spend our entire life trying to understand how we can learn to accept love ourselves beyond the limitations of the illusion right and why do we talk about that because each one of these lifetimes is like um a hologram created in order to interact with these emotions with these with these experiences in order to find the highest expression of ourselves and it is within this lifetime that we have the opportunity to learn everything we need to learn about ourselves and the universe so that we can understand this matrix construct it's almost as if we are asleep we are numb and as we're we're coming into the life here we are starting to experience, I'm sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> sit down comfortably. We are experiencing all of the dualities within us and without us. And it's necessary to do that in order to understand the matrix universe and how everything works. Now, as we are experiencing all of these things in our lifetime, we are brought to a pinnacle point in our life where we question ourselves, who are we, where do we come from, and what, 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 why are we here? And the ultimate answer, we always circle back to understanding what is love. Love, because love is the most expansive energy. It is creative energy. And soon we find out that we are that expression of love, of creation. We have this divine, incredible technology within the physical body to create, to manifest not only things, but energy, vibration, and other beings with the womb. 
and there are so many magnificent different layers to this information of who we are as human beings. We are multidimensional beings with many different aspects to ourselves and all of those aspects are made especially to help us evolve and remove ourselves from this reincarnation cycle. So as you are here experiencing the daily life that you have, we have an opportunity to learn about ourselves. And the only way we're going to do that is by going inside and connecting and understanding how the mind works, how it works interacting with this illusion around us, all of the stories, everything that has made up who we are up until now, our experiences of childhood, our experiences as adults that have created programs within us, which have have created filters. We are sponges and everything that we are experiencing is being constantly recorded within the DNA. The DNA is what absorbs all of the experiences of who we are and what we what we have been as well. And because of that, it makes up our experiences in the now. So because of that, we have to understand that loving ourselves and understanding what we are because when I say loving ourselves you know it's it's not just a romantic notion of connecting with the self oh, sorry. it's not just a you know the romantic idea of oh we need to love ourselves we need to accept ourselves and we need to heal the wounds yes all of that is very true but I'm also talking about um, uh, understanding the universe as well because within ourselves is the answer to everything else okay so when uh, let's uh, go back to this um, source soul that I was talking about as we are relating with our network here on this planet we want to heal every aspect that has caused trauma within us in order to reprogram the DNA all of that information that we are absorbing constantly is recorded in the DNA and constantly is constructing our, our now and constructing our future. Everything happens in the now. So when, when I say that, everything that we are absorbing and the information we're bringing in is creating what we're going to be experiencing next. So it's important to be conscious of, of that now in this present moment. When I talk about loving yourself, I'm also talking about accepting yourself for who you are as the greatest expression of light. And because you are a human being that is source soul, you are a source soul, you are infinite. And you have the ability of moving through these reincarnation cycles with this information. You also have the ability to reprogram your DNA and your information. You have the ability to heal yourself. You have the ability to transform and transmute. You have the ability to work with that very uh, alchemy of the body of information and transform yourself in every level vibrational that you want and you need in order to reach your highest expression as a human being. So I invite you to um, question a little further your experience here on this planet and how you relate with everything around you. I can really get into a lot of details on this topic and I can talk about the aspect of the manifestations of the darkness which is feeding off our lower aspects of ourselves and we can do that all day and that is one reality that we should become aware of at some point or another but what tends to happen that I see is that people get very lost in the stories of um, the uh, extraterrestrial races or the dark forces, even here on the planet. Um, you know, we talk about the cabal and how these dark energies work to uh, hinder us from finding our illumination. But that is something that we need to understand. And once we do, we need to move on because I see a lot of people getting caught in that and then they can't move further than that. They wanna keep looking and looking and searching and you know, the information won't change. It's going to be the same. Yes, we are in a silent war, a silent war, let's say a silent war, but we're talking about an exchange of energy, okay? So it, instead of uh, contributing to this war, 
why don't we focus on where we are exchanging our energy and focus on expanding that vibration on a higher level so that we can create as creators what we need to heal this planet instead of cycling through the same information over and over again. And again, the focus of evolution and to change anything is within you. So the work that you do today here with yourself, um, taking five minutes to meditate, to connect with your physical body, is what's really going to cause the real shift and the real change on this planet. Okay, and on this existence. And forget about the planet and the existence. For your soul journey that is connected to a network of all the humans here within the collective consciousness, okay? We are so interconnected. The biggest illusion is separation, right? We are not separated. We are so connected and we are each other. We are each other. So everything that we are feeling and we are all experiencing at once all the shifts and the movements of the universe, all of the shifts and the energetic pools that they are doing in order to create certain emotions in us. We're all experiencing these waves of energy, healing and destructive as well. So the quicker that we connect with our physical body and learn to love and really understand what we are as soul essences, the more we're going to understand that the power to shift and heal this planet, this virus that we have here on this planet, is by no longer providing that food substance of that low vibration for the dark manifestation within this matrix universe. So please take that into consideration. That's just another aspect of understanding the importance of self-love, the importance of connection to yourself and doing the work your work with your inner child and your trauma is the most valuable thing that you can offer this reality right now because that shifts consciousness on a much larger level collectively. So anyway, I want you all to take a nice deep breath, inhale deeply and exhale. I know we talked about a lot today. I want to take the opportunity to do a quick grounding. I want you to close your eyes real quick. As we inhale deeply and exhale, I want you to visualize the center of the earth and you're going to create an energetic connection that surrounds your body. I want you to send that down to the center of the earth and connect as you anchor yourself down to the center of the planet. We connect ourselves down to the core of the planet because the vibration of the planet Earth is pure creation, it's life, it's intelligence. And that vibration is a very healing vibration for the human body. Grounding yourself down to the center of the Earth allows you to bring all seven bodies that we have around us that are connected to our seven chakras, chakras. these are our energy centers, and our guide map to the world around us. And it also brings our brain into theta state, a more calm, centered, neutral waking state, a very powerful state to be in, in the waking time. We're going to create an energetic shield now. I want you to visualize your energetic shield around you. This is energy 101, creating energy around your physical body so that you are, this is energy that already exists around your energetic body. What you are doing is you're becoming conscious of that, creating a protective shield, engaging in that energy that you give off and being conscious of that energy around you so that you can decide what you allow to connect to you and you can decide what you want to rather leave outside of you. So anything negative that is occurring with the cabal, with politics, with these terrible things that are happening outside of us, with arguments, with uh, bills, with deadlines in the office, with emotional relationships. 
we choose that we are empowered within our reality and we are creating every moment from a balanced and centered perspective, regardless of what occurs outside. So create your shield around you, above you, below you, to every side, being conscious and mindful, holding this space every moment of your day, inhaling deeply, and exhaling. So today for the third part of our self-love challenge, I want you to focus on questioning, who are you? Who are you without everything that you have been raised, all of the structures of belief? So whatever your parents said that you should be, whatever friends said that you should be, whatever society said you should be. And I want you to question, are you congruent with that information? Are you living in alignment with who you really are deep within? Or is there a place where there is an identity that is not in alignment with what you are? So I want you to question, how, what aspects of you are being constructed constantly by your surroundings, whether that's the media, whether that's what you see online, on Instagram, in magazines? Who are you? Who do you want to be? I want you to check in with yourself and connect with your deepest aspects of yourself. And again, this is a great exercise to do after the exercise that we did yesterday, where we are starting to merge the dualities within. Hi, David. So once we merge the dualities within, we can then question, who are we then? We are all of these things, but who are we now? Who are we representing? Do I feel good everywhere I go? Am I proud of who I am everywhere I go? Is this really uh, the way that I want to act and behave and question and feel? I see a lot of people that when they are in groups, they tend to follow one person or another person and sometimes they lose themselves and their identity within that. Are we doing that on a grander scale, people? Let's take a look at that. Let's identify with our real true source essence, our true form of who we are, knowing all that we know about this existence and this reality. Who are we? Peeling away the layers of uh, false identities, of expectations, of lies, of insecurities, of beliefs that no longer serves us as we come into a birth of a new person which is integrated and whole with all things around us, even these realities that are hard to accept sometimes. Very good. As you inhale deeply and exhale, we're going to balance our energetic system. I want you to start with the red chakra. You're going to balance that chakra back into a balanced state at the root of your chakra, the very root of your spine. That is your red chakra. We're going to go up to the second chakra, the sacral chakra right below the navel. Visualize aligning that chakra back into balance the width of your body, front and back. Balancing all of that sexual energy. That is the energy of giving and receiving. So important. One of the easiest manipulated energies that we have as humans. Must learn how to control and balance that energy. That's also the energy of money, of abundance. We're going to go up to our solar plexus in the core of our bodies. Visualize moving that chakra back into balance. That yellow chakra. Front and back. This is the, our emotional center. The, the third easiest way. 
The first is your root chakra. That's the center for security, feeling safe, being at home in your body on this earth. But they play around with that a lot because that's where we also feel fear. And they play with our fear tremendously, don't they? With all the things that they show us day in and day out. The second, the sexuality. Our empowerment. And third is actually the center for empowerment. Our emotions. Do they play with our emotions energetically, vibrationally? With the things that they show us. So we are now fully balancing our physical body. We're going to go up into the heart center, the green light in the center of the chest. We're going to bring that into balance. So we are 100% in balance in our heart chakra. This is our center for self-love, the center for connection, for expansion. We absolutely want to maintain that balance. We're going to go up to the throat chakra, the blue light in the center of your throat. Visualize balancing that center chakra. This is your communication, your expression, speaking your truth. Are you speaking your truth every moment of your day? Balancing that blue light front and back. Asking yourself every word that you say, that you type, that you express, is it coming from the highest vibration possible? Is it creating change, healing in the world around you? Is it creating healing for yourself? We're gonna go up to the third eye, the indigo. Visualize bringing that back into a balanced state. All in alignment, up your spine, front and back, all chakras in perfect alignment. This is the technology of our body and we have to learn how to utilize how to access and work with this energy aligning our intuition one of the most powerful tools that we have in order to communicate with dimensions beyond this physical dimension and finally